you with these books. Let's talk about The Sopranos and books. You know what they say. The books are closed. What I'm going to do here in this video is go through the different books that we see and hear about on The Sopranos and kind of tie them all together into this bigger theme or these bigger themes that we see on The Sopranos. First up, the Audubon Society's Encyclopedia of North American Birds. Hello! Books by Zora Neale Hurston. Our lecture series in action. It's someone from the university discussing the novels of, I believe, Zora Neale Hurston. Huh. Yeah. Didn't you just read her in school, Med? Anarchy, State, and Utopia. Memoirs of a Geisha. I want to spend more time with AJ. That's the other one you should spend time with. She's almost out of the house. Hey, I'm not worried about Meadow. Meadow can take care of herself. How to Write a Movie in 21 Days. I had some problems with my screenplay, so I bought that book, uh, How to Write a Movie in 21 Days. That was like a year ago. The Stranger. You want him to read something other than Hustler? Hello? You gotta sign The Stranger. The Philosophers. In the words of Dr. Melfi, looks like Anthony Jr. has found existentialism. That's not what Nietzsche says. Oh, Nietzsche. Nietzsche? Well, I'm talking to his horse. If the shoe fits. And I know what you're going to tell me, Sasha. He copped it all from Husserl and Heidegger. Take a look at Kierkegaard. A hey, Kierkegaard said, every duty is essentially duty to God. Tis by Frank McCourt, along with Angela's Ashes. But in Angela's Ashes, you were laughing with him at least. Right? How did he make such a party? Funny is beyond me. <laughs> My God, with that father? Well, it's true. We don't know what poverty is in this country. Did you learn the writing? No, it's like he makes certain choices about how he is going to portray people. What is that? Chicken soup for the soul. Should we tomato sauce for your ass? It's the Italian version. Ha <laughs> ha. Somebody give me this. I'm at it work. Passages. My business. I see girls come and go. So I know. Time is the great enemy. You've got a very short window. It's not good to get too hung up on any one thing. On the other hand, something new always comes along. I've seen it a million times. It's, it's called uh, Passages. You know, it's a book. Robert Frost stopping by woods on a snowy evening. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Okay, look. Where is he? He's in a field on a horse. He's not on the horse. The horse has bells. A horse that's pulling a sleigh. <sighs> so this is a Thanksgiving poem. Like over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house we go. What's covering the field? Snow. Yay! Cold, endless white, endless nothing. He has miles to go before he sleeps. So he must be far away from his house. The sleep of death. The big sleep. The Horse Whisperer and Omerta. Put some books on tape. Uh, since you say you can't concentrate to read, put the uh, Horse Whisperer and Omerta. The Art of War by Sun Tzu, aka Sun Tzu. Reading that uh, a book you told me about. You know, the Art of War by Sun Tzu. I mean, here's this guy, a Chinese general, wrote this thing 2,400 years ago. And most of it still applies today. Balk the enemy's power, force him to reveal himself. Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. You ever read Crime and Punishment? Dostoevsky. It's not an easy read. It's about guilt and redemption. And I think for your husband to turn himself in, read this book, and 
reflect on his crimes every day for seven years in his cell, and he might be redeemed. The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. Is your Edgar Allan Poe paper? You did it already? No problem. Thanks. I would have done it myself. I was going to do it. I just couldn't get through the books. I never should have took literature of obsession. Oh, you big time. A People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them. Subjugate. And make them do whatever we want. That doesn't sound like a slave trader to you? Billy Budd. Billy Budd is the story of an innocent sailor being picked on by an evil boss. Who's picking on him out of self-loathing caused by homosexual feelings in a military context. Oh, please. Actually, Mrs. Soprano, there is a passage in the book where Melville compares Billy to a nude statue of Adam before the fall. Eloise, of course. <laughs> what am I, a child? Actually, yes. Your apartment in Manhattan notwithstanding. What? And I'm sure your friend the princess found us quite amusing. You're the one who wanted me to go to an Ivy League school. These are the type of people who go there. There are also people who grew up without indoor plumbing, but you would know even less about them. My Search for Bill W. by Mel B. Leonard Maltin's 2003 Movie and Video Guide. Now, to give us some background, let's see what Leonard Maltin has to say. A uh, film that broke all the rules and invented some new ones. The cinematography, music, and Oscar-winning screenplay by Wells and Herman J. something are all first-rate. Madame Bovary. Hey, have you read Madame Bovary? No. It's almost a perfect novel. Flaubert writes about bourgeois loneliness, emptiness. Emma Bovary destroys herself for some fantasy in her head. It's great, it's truly, it's truly great. Somehow horrifically funny, though tragic. Abelard and Heloise. Well, what is Abelard and Heloise? It looks religious. It's the classic story. 12th century scholar falls in love with his underage student, gets her pregnant. What? In the 12th century? And they're found out. And her uncle, the abbot, has him castrated. It's timeless, really. Their passion burns on through these incredible letters through the rest of their lives. Remains of a Tyrannosaurus rex yielded soft tissue that indicated a definite link between dinosaurs and modern birds. The Da Vinci Code. Who knows who is Leonardo Da Vinci? Hi, Hi, Maddie? Maddie? Yeah, he wrote the Da Vinci Code. No. Another man wrote that, but it's a hideous, sacrilegious book. The Second Coming by Yeats. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man. A gaze blank and pitiless as the sun. The twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed a nightmare by a rocking cradle. How to clean practically anything. Oh. <laughs> the criminal personality. I'm sorry, Tony. I'm sorry. Just push her away. No, she's all right. Throughout The Sopranos, these various books that we encounter often echo and mirror back to us themes that exist on the show, and in some cases, themes that are particularly strong in a given episode or season where the book has been placed. They speak to the human condition and the struggle that humans have faced since the beginning of time, which can feel either very liberating or very depressing. 
depending on how you look at it, I guess. Perhaps we're in Italy, and Annalisa is giving Tony a walking tour and explaining the history of the area. Or maybe Carmela is remarking on the jewelry that women in Paris wore hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Or maybe we go back millions of years to the time of the dinosaurs. Do you have a favorite book that appears on The Sopranos? I'd love to hear. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'd love to hear your thoughts.